Yeah, I refreshed. Alright, is the delay better? 10 seconds, much better. <clears throat> Alright, sorry about that. I didn't realize the delay had gotten that bad. I think it was just progressive as my uh, connection lagged out over time. Let's talk about LEGO Star Wars. Alright, let me wrap this up. Uh, I expect you to die. It's okay for a VR game. Um, obviously, I don't think there's anything that's come out in VR that I would say get a VR headset for. Um, but if you have a VR headset, this is probably one of those games you probably should pick up at some point. But I would say probably on pretty deep discount. Um, I like it. It's got a similar sense of humor to Breath Edge, uh, but it also does not completely shit the bed like Breath Edge does. Um, on the other hand, I think Grime is an easier sell because you don't need a VR headset for it. So I'm going to really arbitrarily dump I Expect You to Die right there. It also has a sequel that's not very good. Alright, Peng. Call you up. And hopefully, uh, chat will work. Do I have you on Steam? Where's Peng? I don't know what your Steam name is, Peng. Unless you just wanted to do it on uh, text chat. Oh, there here we, we go. go. Okay, I can no longer hear so, myself. Let's talk about Lego Star Wars TM the Complete uh, oh, yeah. Saga. Let me let me swap. Let's talk this about out. Lego Star Wars. Let's talk about WB Games. Oh, uh, hang hang on. Let me let me uh, go ahead and put you up on these. So, Pengu wants to talk about Lego Star Wars and Lego Star Wars Three. Is that right? Hello? Oh, wow, you did two of them. I did uh, the Complete Saga, which is technically LEGO Star Wars 1 and 2 combined, originally for the Xbox release, but it was re-released on PC. And I also did uh, LEGO Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. There's a pregnant Mara Jade in the game? No. No. Uh, well, there might be. There might be. I, I didn't unlock all of the character models for either of these games. So let's start with the first, uh, the complete saga, which is Lego Star well, Wars. Let's, let's let's start with my background with the Lego Lego game series. So All I right. played the Lord of the Rings one, and that one was like uh, peak soul. It's probably the best Lord of the Rings game okay. because it's uh, based. I think the developer before they made it a Lego game, they wanted to make it like the tie-in movie game. Yeah, that was and the like... first one where they had like the the lines from the movie as the voices instead of just Lego babble. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, like they had, they had like done a free prototype, and you can like find a video on YouTube of them showing it off, and like the people are like, "Wow, this is really creative. We don't want to go this direction." So eventually it turned into a Lego game. So that was peak soul. Then I did Lego Hobbit. I could not finish that game uh, because it was completely empty of soul. <laughs> so like I 100% of the Lego Lord of the Rings and I recommend anybody get it if you wanted to play a Lord of the Rings game because it's actually probably the most lore accurate Lord of the Rings game uh, movie tie-in there is. Huh. So I I'm wondering if the Lego Star Wars games are soul or soulless just because of the huge disparity between the hobbit versus the lord of the rings i would say and this is obviously just my opinion i would say the lego star wars games are probably the most filled with soul of almost any star wars oh wow you're getting the helmets on yeah so what's special about the lego star wars games at least these these first three is that it's not at all taking itself seriously. There's pregnant uh, uh, Padme, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the very funny, but Good uh, shit. <laughs> but what I, I would fucked your mom, kid. Exactly. Well, what I would say about this is that it's very rough and it's very like early uh, 
20 aughts, I guess. Not not that early, but it, it, it's... Oh, wait, the complete saga doesn't include uh, the prequels. No, it does. It's the Skywalker saga. Oh, oh, the, sorry, the, the, the sequels. The, the sequels. No, no, the, the Lego sequels game is not out yet. At least as far as I know. They pushed it back due to COVID, which is hilarious. Oh, wow. Yeah. I thought it was out and it was so awful nobody talked about it. I no. I to make some fun jokes like I want to f*** Daisy Ridley. Daisy Ridley up the f***. But oh. she's not in this game. Oh, that's so crude. And also, if we were going to be having that discussion, I would have invited Phallic Baldwin. Yeah, where where is he? Uh, he's uh, playing okay. a pen and we're paper. Waiting for, we're waiting for the Skywalker saga to finally come out. Yeah, and yeah. And ruin Lego Star Wars Legacy. Yeah. So, yeah, so if this is 07, this means it's from the Soul era, not the Soulless era. Yeah, um, absolutely. Is... And even, even the sequel is, but we'll talk about this. Uh, well, sequel, sequel. Uh, we'll talk about three later. But for this one, it it is kind of hard to go back to just because it's technically kind of crude to play through um this was the first lego game uh by telltale oh um okay. it, this is what started it all yeah this is where you know all of the mechanics got started like all a lot of the design stuff and so it's all like they came out of the gate running and I do still think even the, like the original release of this is fun to play through, but it's also pretty stiff to play through. Like there's a lot of points where it's, you just are required to do certain things that are kind of tedious or unnatural. Um, and most of that is alleviated just by the amount of charm because like right there, Chewie's got his helmet on and it works and disguises him, but it's just kind of sitting on the side of his head. Very cute. Yeah, yeah. Matt, come here. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say this is worth playing back through, but not seriously. Um, it's worth a revisit, but not worth picking up because you really want to uh, play through it. It's more worth picking up just to kind of pass the time on a weekend or something and from what i recall this looks like it you know it goes through all of the like the uh the major areas of the movies and even some of the ones you might not have thought of it, that was my experience with yeah. lord of the rings yeah it, it's very similar and it maybe even goes a little bit further because there's a lot of things where they just sort of expand on like a scene that's a, a real quick, like, one-off scene with a, you know, one-off area of the 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 in-universe universe, I guess. And it, it sort of gets blown up into, like, this whole thing, like, uh, the, the Jabba's Palace, where you basically only see a couple rooms of Jabba's actual palace in the movies. Uh, in this, you do a whole, like, infiltration thing where you're disguised as bounty hunters and you blow up these mechanisms yeah, yeah. and create new mechanisms to open gates. And it's it's neat. It's, it's very similar to a lot of the other, like, early Star Wars video games where it expands on the expanded universe without being awful. Um, but it's also not taking itself seriously at all. Like, all of the mechanisms are either, like like kind of tie-ins to other lego things or just kind of jokes like you'll build you'll build I, I don't know any good examples but you'll build like a giant uh like you'll make a spaceship out of like carrots or something like that mm. but uh yeah. yeah not seeing like any sort of puzzles where like you just sort of you see an obstacle and then you like build a solution to it. Did they do that yet for this game? They they did, but it was a little more toned down. They didn't have as complex like construction things in this one. It was a lot more straightforward. Like you kind of break through certain things, you find certain switches. Um, this one does have a couple uh, points where you're just kind of stuck in a room and have to kill a certain number of enemies or figure out a way to hit a boss that is invulnerable to most things. And it does kind of drag down there, but it doesn't have as much of the 
sort of more convoluted stuff that uh, I know the Lego Harry Potter games got really convoluted. So, yeah, Sp Spock saying the constant gags remind me of the Zucker Abram Zucker films. Oh, Mac, go get a toy. Go get a toy. My dog's bothering me. But yeah, I, I, I like this. Um, I wouldn't put it super high on the list, but the list is pretty slim right now. I don't know, let me scroll over to what our actual list is looking like here. Have you played anything that's currently on the list? I've played Mega Man 2, and I've played Dragon Quest. Okay. Oh wait, on the list. Well, on, on the, the, list on the ranked the list. On the ranked list. I played Dragon Quest. Uh, Can you see it well enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've only played Dragon Quest on that list. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't play indie games because uh, I I bought uh, I bought Brigador. Yeah. And I felt bamboozled by it. Well, and you found out later you were supporting a literal neo Nazi, <laughs> so I can't blame you. So, would you put this above Dragon Quest? Uh, no. I think <laughs> just because Dragon Quest is a sort of foundational genre staple. Okay. I, I can't put I can't put movie tie-in game above that. I will push back on that because this is a foundational genre staple for the Lego series. Which Lego franchise? Which, yeah, which probably mm. has uh, more titles and has probably seen more action than uh, the entire Dragon Quest series. I, I, are you aware there's there's 12 Dragon Quest games? <laughs> there are a shitload of LEGO games. Did you know they made an Indiana Jones LEGO? They made two of them, I think. They've made like eight DC Universe ones. They made Marvel uh, superheroes and Marvel supervillains, and I think they made two Marvel superheroes ones. Now that I think about it. Yeah, but how many of those are soulless cash grabs? Whereas, whereas Dragon Quest has been peak soul every release. Uh, no comment. But <laughs> this is Star Wars. I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. This is Star Wars, and this is probably the only good way to experience the original trilogy that is official in any way anymore mm. you, you literally cannot watch a original trilogy movie that has less bullshit in it than this even though you literally have to play through the first stage of the uh episode one in order to unlock anything else for some reason they forced you to go through that as a tutorial mission Okay. So uh, you see, in, in Dragon Quest, the phone version, you princess carry a princess. I mean, you can do that in the uh, NES version as well. I don't actually know if you can do that uh, or what the sprite is for the Famicom version. Do you know? Since the Famicom version doesn't have sprite turning, I don't know if they changed the sprite for princess carrying. Let's see if I can find it. This is gripping. <laughs> Pengu, you should play this. Wonderland.cz slash Lord of the Rings. Halfle's trying to get you to play some uh, sketchy mod or something. Oh, this is like a movie tie-in for a Babansky animated. Nice. Oh, wait. Rebrate of Game Engine for the very famous Lord of the Rings game by Interplay. Uh, now let's see. Don't forget your task. You were looking up to see if there was Princess Carry in the Famicom version of Dragon Quest One. I, do... I do know that Dragon Quest One's Famicom version had there a. Is. Oh, there is. Okay. I do um, know it also had a, a, a puff chat. puff puff right. There was a, a girl uh, who... This, this might be a fake one, because he said there was no directionals. This is for Dragon Warrior. 
I might have to look yeah, at Dragon the War quest. Yeah, Dragon Warrior was the uh, North American release because of uh, copyright issues with Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest was a band, I believe, right? Or no? Was it because there was a band named Dragon Quest, or was it uh, another game called Dragon Quest? Dragon Quest 1 versus Final Fantasy 1 versus Fantasy Star 1. Dragon Quest 1, for sure. Final Fantasy 1 is some bullshit. Like, it, it's, it's neat for the time, but it's bullshit. The fucking enemy parties that show up with, like, nine uh, enemies that guaranteed move before you do and guaranteed poison and paralysis you and shit. I just assume Sierra wanted to make a Dragon Quest game. There was a Dragon Quest tabletop PNP. There's been everything as a tabletop PNP at this point. Like, that's not special anymore. They turned Bloodborne into a tabletop game. Uh, they turned uh, Victor Origins, uh, Loyalty and Blood, into a tabletop game. They turned Xerathos, Air of Thunder, into a tabletop game. Everything's got a tabletop game at this point. The Dark Souls tabletop game seems surprisingly successful. Is it any good? Like, what do you... Is it like a dragon or a Dungeons and Dragons style thing, but with Dark Souls characters? Or I don't know. Well, then, how do you know that it seems surprisingly successful, Halfle? What have you been doing? It ranked on Board Game Geek. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I, I'm gonna give up and say that uh, this can go below Dragon Quest. Whether or not the Famicom version had Princess Carry, I, I'll agree it had it had Puff Puff. It had Puff Puff, right? Or was that Dragon Quest Two? I think there was Puff Puff in the first one. Yeah, they they obviously removed it from the U.S. Uh, edition, but yeah, yeah so. Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. I'm gonna put it above Crown Trick, too. Uh, Crown Trick is kinda neat. It's got some cool mechanics, but it's also a roguelite, so I don't think... Uh, I, I don't think it has as universal appeal as this. I also think just going through this uh, is more fun than Crown Trick. And Crown Trick, I believe, is Chinese devs, or maybe it's uh, Singaporean. I'm not sure. But let's move on to uh, LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, which is in almost every way a better game. It's a lot more fluid, there's a lot less stiffness. Oh, Pengu's left. <laughs> and I guess just muted me. So let's talk about the Dragon Souls uh, tabletop RPG. It had a few supplements. I think it's Japan only. Dungeon Crawl. Um, that'd be interesting. I wonder if anybody's uh, translated any of it. Because I'd be kind of curious what it actually entails. Like, if you're playing it multiplayer, if it's sort of, like, co-op, it'd be kind of interesting to play as an invader to a tabletop session. Hmm. Linking of the Fire. Oh, it's based on Dra uh, Dark Souls 3? That's kind of weird. Dark Souls 3, I, I mean, I guess I'll talk about it more when I get to it, but uh, Dark Souls 3, 
having replayed it again, again, I, I was, it, it's shocking to me just how, uh, how little fleshed out it is as far as the lore and like the plot. Like, even just the plot of it is so thin and, uh, like, incoherent, where, where it clearly doesn't know what the point is of anything that it does. It's really kind of frustrating, like, you, you start out and you've got, like, a bunch of dead end things that wind up being dead ends, like the, the pus of man that comes out of, uh... Gundir and the early game enemies and the whole thing with Pontiff Sullivan and all that stuff just kind of stops being relevant at some point. Same with all the talk about the angels and then in the DLCs like everybody talks about how amazing the DLCs are for wrapping up the story but I don't know I, n I never played the DLCs in the vanilla game but they haven't changed them much in the uh, the mod that I played. And, and, like, all of the new items, all of the new stuff, it's all fine. But the, it doesn't tie in at all with the rest of the series. And feels very, I don't know, out of left field. And kind of thrown together. Which feels uh, a little unfair to talk about because of uh, Dark Souls 2 being such a mess. <clears throat> but, uh... This is a pretty jazzy song. <laughs> I love this of Anakin making fun of women drivers. What's up, Pen? I'm back. I had to take the hugest shit. Nice, nice. Did you wipe? Yes. Okay. I washed my hands. Nice. Very cool. What did you just crack open? Is that a beer? This is a Dr. Pepper and cream soda. Ooh. Uh, zero sugar. Ooh. Ooh. Zero sugar. Oh. You're watching your figure? I, I don't like to... I feel like if you get calories in soda, you're, you're wasting uh, valuable calories you could be getting from good food. That's true. You know how I handle it? The you drink water? The only things I drink are water, black tea, and black coffee. You know why? Because I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so I've moved on to Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. That's a lot of clone troopers, holy shit. Yeah, that is one of the things that really ramps up in the the going from the complete uh, saga to Clone Wars game is that there's, like, the scale of it completely jumps up and it's actually handled really well. So, uh... Like one of the first things that the tutorial mission for this game is this mission in the arena at the end of the Clone Wars movie. And there's just like hundreds of droids and shit all attacking everywhere. And they freed up your movement and your attacking so that you're actually like carving swaths through all of these uh, robots and stuff like that. 
it's really impressive just how much they were able to improve the controls and the feel of running around smashing shit. Um, and, and you genuinely feel pretty powerful as pretty much any uh, type of character in this. And they also freed up like the, the vehicle missions. That there were some missions in the first game that were just purely you flying around in like a X-Wing or whatever. And they were all right, but that was all you did. And in this one, they kind of merged the two so that there are places where you can like land your fighter and get out and run around and do Lego stuff. Um, and then find another place to get your ship again and fly around to some other place. It's all really cool. I, I think it's probably... A a better uh, upgrade than it was from the uh, Lord of the Rings game to the uh, Hobbit game, based on what you said. I played the the Lord of the Rings one, but not the Hobbit one. Yeah, this looks like it came out a year before the Lord of the Rings one, so this was probably, I think, where they started introducing a bunch of really good engine updates. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I... Out, oh, we can put on hundreds of minifigs because they're really just low poly yeah exactly like no textures <clears throat> and, and a lot of people complained about the um the rest of the environmental graphics where it's clearly not legos oh, but yeah. i i never had too much of a problem with that it felt more t to me it feels like you playing with legos and other toys like, you would get, like, a Power Rangers toy and have, like, Lego guys riding the Power Rangers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so that 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 always, uh, th that was never a problem to me with these games. I, I don't know what you thought of the, the Lego Lord of the Rings environments. Well, I always felt like, you know, if you were playing with Legos as a kid, like, you still had to like put it down like on a carpet or a sofa or something right or or like make so it's just like okay i put my legos down next to some thing that actually looks really good right you know, I... so like this this for, whole, for this certain arena. things they do go through the effort to lego a fire uh, yeah well like the legs of this creature where the creature itself is like high def and then the la the front legs that you destroy are made out of Legos so that they can show them like falling apart. Uh, the guest is Pengu, by the way. <clears throat> so I mean, yeah, like, yeah, like that one little base thing there was like on like a Lego plate. Yeah, that's what I kind of remember. So it's just like slap it down right yeah maybe some of these ships should have been more lego fired yeah like the the little ship the the republic cruiser or whatever that you're pulling into the primitive star destroyer that's all legos because that's an actual lego kit that they sold uh. um and then the star destroyer is not i guess they never made a lego kit for the old republics or not old republic but the republic yeah. star destroyers But I, Benator. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that's why. Uh, because this, uh, all all of these games also had the mini figs as collectibles. So like each level, you would uh, find ten pieces of the mini fig, and it would. Uh, uh, I, I, this is bullshit because the Lego Venator class does exist. Oh, oh, well. I'm completely wrong then. But yeah, I, I thought the whole thing was that it they were out. basically just digital. the same year as this game. I think that might have been the issue. Oh, okay. I, I always figured they were just like digitifying uh, the actual Lego mini kits and kits that they were making and selling at the time. And that some things just didn't have representations and they didn't think it would be worth designing like a lego version of the star destroyer if they weren't going to produce that as an actual toy let me see yeah, this that thing. makes sense 
or even just like trying to scale that up so that the uh right because tantive well because this the smaller republic uh whatever shuttle that goes up inside of it like the studs would be completely different sizes i think that would be um kind of an issue if you have one going into the other and they're clearly different sizes i don't know i'm just finding excuses for them now because i like this <laughs> game but uh yeah so I... does this cover like the second movie or does it cover like uh the, the cartoon show yeah it covers the as far as i know it covers the uh, cartoon show up into the point up to the point that the game was made um because i never watched the cartoon series so i don't really have any frame of reference for most of the shit that happens in this game uh and there's no spoken dialogue either so i really just have the vaguest idea of what's going on at any point but it, it's all conveyed very well with the uh like these are just little lego people and they still have a lot more expression and emotion and charm than like th the most high def like real actor digified into a video game now like this whole scene of this this chick pulling into the parking spot and completely fucking up the parallel parking <laughs> I mean that 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 blows Last of Us Two out of the water, and I don't I don't think there's any argument about that. Okay, but but, but how well does it convey what's going on in the cartoon series? I have no idea, honestly. Um, I, I was do gonna say um, I do know it they, has like there's no love punch equivalent for this game. No what? The love punch mean? Lev Punch. I don't know what that is. Well, let me... Yeah, pull that up. Lev Punch. You finding an example? Oh, oh, from Last of Us. Yeah. Okay, um... Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, there's a lot of, like references to things but it again it goes over my head for the most part <laughs> very funny <laughs> flex tape uh, i like i just wanted to reference a meme i like um, that doom one no i was looking at the wiki party wikipedia article and it says the game covers uh, the Clone Wars movie, which was they made an animated movie that I don't think any of us watched because we yeah. were like uh, 20 when it came out or something. Yeah. And that uh, the first two seasons of the cartoon show. And that was back when it was actually a cartoon and not some 3D CGI bullshit. Where... No, no, that's the 3D CGI bullshit. Oh, was it's it? Not the, uh, I, I don't think they're talking about the. Wait, no, maybe they were. Shit. Yeah, because there was an actual cartoon cartoon, Clone Wars, and then there was, uh, the, like, the Not reboot the of is. it, or maybe, like, a continuation of the story with, uh, the orange chick who shows up, uh, what does she show up in? Oh, um, The Mandalorian, right? I also did not watch The Mandalorian, by the way. I was just saying it's the 3D CGI cartoon. Oh, okay. Well, that's kind of disappointing. As Spock points out, the cartoon was by the Samurai Jack people. I did see some of that. Um, it was mostly the stuff where the stormtroopers were going to war, though. Because those were kind of cool. Did you ever play the, uh, the uh, Clone Trooper game? It was like a third, no. third person shooter. Like a squad it's not based. Like an Xbox game. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have an Xbox. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, 
speaking of Xbox, uh, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga was originally the Xbox uh, combined port of the first two games. And uh, they added like a whole bunch of extra mini kits and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of like little extra modes to both of these games. But I think this one comes out ahead because the extra modes also tie into Star Wars stuff instead of just being like generic Lego stuff. So like there's a whole extra mode. There's like certain missions that uh, play out sort of like uh, RTS games with hero where you play as the hero units and you like uh, dictate what structures get built at each of the control points that you own. And then you can like uh, order out uh, groups of storm uh, uh, clone troopers or robots depending on which faction you're in. Yeah, Primal is another cartoon by the Samurai Jack uh, people. Um, and Car Wash said Primal was pretty good. He also really liked the uh, the more recent Samurai Jack uh, cartoon. I haven't watched either of them, though, despite Car Wash insisting that I should. Yeah, I, I think we've covered uh, Lego Star Wars pretty well here. Um, yeah, I think the only thing I have left to add is that I would still rate Dragon Quest above this, uh, just because, uh, you know, I, I was thinking about what do I own Star Wars in my house? And the answer is nothing. And what do I own Dragon Wars in my house? And I own like, uh, like six physical games. Yeah. Uh, so. Do you have any plushies? Uh, not of either, no. Uh, would you, uh, would you have a, uh, King Slime plush if you were offered one? I, I, I want the regular slime. I think King Slime's kind of ugly. Really? Really? Yeah. I, he's a little too chungus. Yeah. I, I want the, I want the OG blue one. Uh, I don't know how, uh, Arena would feel about that. He's got he's got like the King Slime merch and shit behind him at all times. It's fine merch, but if I had to pick one, I'd pick the original. Is that your favorite uh, Dragon Quest uh, sprite? I guess or design? Is there? Uh, no. You're looking My up favorite. the reference. My favorite uh, Dragon Quest design is Jade with the uh, enhanced sweaty skin mod. Yeah, I was going to make a Jade joke. I was also going to make... Uh, hold on a sec. I need to find her name. I haven't played Dragon Quest 8 yet. Jessica? Yeah, Jessica's tits. That's yeah. my favorite Dragon Quest design. <laughs> uh, Spock's excited by that. This was uh, back before uh... token validation failed. Fail, big fail ping. Oh, fuck. Come on, this is live on air. I I'm using Bing image search. <laughs> Jesus. The, the, the Bing version might work. There you go. The Magician Jessica. Journey of the Cursed King. This is uh, back before Akira got completely brain broke and then made every girl and boy look like the same emaciated uh, adolescent. But hey, enough of that. Some of, some of us are into something. Some of us are into emaciated adolescents. I think it's funny that, uh, like, all the new Dragon Quest games, they'll let Akira do all the designs, and then they'll let, like, understudies come in, and then bring in back his old sexy girl design <laughs> and put them on top. I mean... Or if it's, like, a muscle guy, they're like, okay, yeah, sure, sure, he's that skinny. It's like, okay, we need to pump up this guy. Uh, the fuck is he doing? 
muscle guys are not stick figures. Hey, if it works, don't fix it. So I'm going to put this right above Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga, and I suppose I will leave Dragon Quest where it is for now. I mean, I mean, you do, you do what you want to do. I'm just telling you where I would put it. And well, that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. So otherwise, this would be like eight hours of me talking about like the 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 nuances between like Tony Hawk's Pro Skaters one and two and Mega Man nine, and I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how long I could keep that up for. <laughs> could I be a word search engine? All right, so I, I have one last comment. Uh, yeah. Why isn't there a pure test game? It's fucking bullshit. A what? Uh, oh, you were on the Lodos War above. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, did you play through that? No. Okay. Well. I, I thought about it, but I, I'm a very busy person, so I waste my time with really stupid games. Yeah. So, so. It, it's not Lord of the Rings, and they're, it's an indie game, so. I wouldn't I, bother. I'm very afraid of indie games and especially indie Metroidvanias. Yeah, you didn't play the uh, some... you didn't play the other team Ladybug game, did you? The uh, Toho no. one. It was good. No. Did you play the uh, the Toho uh, Super Paper Mario or Super Mario? Uh, what do you call it? Super Mario RPG knockoff that was a Toho game? No, the last uh, the last Toho game I played was Imperishable Night. Oh, okay. A an actual Toho game? Yeah. yeah. See, I don't play yeah, those. It's been a while since that one. I don't, I don't play uh, shmups. At least I try not to. I just don't have the eyes for it. My eyes won't cross or whatever you need to do to actually keep track of shit in those. Well, it was nice having you, Pangu. Mm -hmm. I'll let yeah, you go. I don't go. got much else to say. This is a lot of indie games that I've never been in touch with a stick and oh. Mega Man. Okay, what about Resident Evil Village? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so I bought Resident Evil 4 for GameCube. Uh huh. Like ten years ago, I still haven't put it in my GameCube. Okay, what about Resident Evil Four VR? Well, I mean, if I'm not gonna play Four, I'm not gonna play any of the other ones. But it's, it's for just, VR. Uh, it's, it's basically. I don't have VR either. <laughs> yeah, I, I should. That, why should you? There's nothing to play on it. <laughs> I've, I've got like three games on here that I, I think if you owned a VR headset already would be worth picking up, but I don't have anything yet that I would say get VR for. Like, it's, it's depressing actually looking through the VR store and trying to find anything. It's worse than looking on like a phone app store. <laughs> Is Deathloop... Um... I think Deathloop's kind of cool. It's not great, but it's better than Dishonored 2. But we'll get to that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I need to get VR because I need to pretend that they're going to support VR games just like they supported uh, NVIDIA 3D Vision games before. Yeah. Are, are you going to get a, uh, a meta headset and join the metaverse? <laughs> no. No. Well, no, that, no. That's too bad. I'll let you know all about it. <laughs> God knows I'm tapped in with the fucking social media. Whatever the hell else is going on there. Chinese state influence. Alright, I'm cutting this voice chat off before we continue talking. About I thing. don't got anything good anymore. I'm sorry. Well, you never Nobody had anything good. All right, later. All right, death poop. Does it... 
Does anybody want to talk about death poop? I don't think so. Pengu did his best. <laughs> Ouch. Alright. I guess I'll talk about death poop. Although it's going to be kind of awkward. Uh... Since I have not yet rated uh, Dishonored 2, and this would immediately go above Dishonored 2. So that would help narrow things down. Deathloop is cool. Um, but it definitely has some pretty big flaws. Uh, one of them is just weapon variety and enemy variety is not very interesting. You basically have a sniper rifle, a shotgun... Um, a couple pistols, uh, and, and they tried to differentiate them with mods, but it doesn't really do a whole lot, uh, especially when your primary method of dealing with situations is to walk behind somebody and hit F to machete them to death, unless it bugs out like here. Um, oh dear. <laughs> well, this is not the right game. I don't know why that's happening. That is the, uh, the Getsu Fuma Den, uh, game that Konami is currently allowing some actual devs to make. <laughs> Homer Simpson piss. So yeah, one of the interesting things with Deathloop is the whole invasion mechanic, which I honestly had a really fun time with on both sides of it. But it's still really, really flawed. Um, it, it just does not have very good netcode, and it doesn't let you know what your connection's like until you've gotten into an invasion and you realize that doors take like three full seconds to open after you press the button. Um, but it's a lot more fun going through these maps The Ashes Afterglow Doom TC. I don't know anything about the Ashes Afterglow Doom TC. That might be interesting. I'll have to look that up. I was going to do a whole thing of uh, people giving me recommendations for next year uh, if I run ad games to talk about here. Uh, Deathloop is... It's fun, and it's better than... Uh, I think it's better than any of the other arcane stuff since, like... Uh, uh, Arx Fatalis, honestly. I, I liked Prey, but I was, it, it dragged on too long. I feel like this, uh, structured as it is, kind of as a loop with uh, a very limited set of maps, is actually a lot tighter. They added a new dungeon to Lord of the Rings and I got into a group. <laughs> That's fair enough. And I honestly like the uh, the characters and a lot of the writing in this too. Um, I like the main character a lot and I like uh, uh, Juliana's voice actor. So yeah, I, I, I would put this pretty high. Let me see. I would put it above Crown Trick. I don't know where I would put it with regards to the Star Wars games. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention with Pengu is that uh, Star Wars, Lego Star Wars 3 is literally uh, not completable. Um, at least on some machines, it seems like uh, the first Separatist mission, which is like a separate thing uh, uh, of like side missions that you play as the, the bad guys for. It's like a s shorter list of missions, but uh, the very first one literally bugs out every single time I complete it, and it tries to play the ending cutscene and uh, deletes you know, any data that you even attempted it and crashes the game. 
and nothing I did uh, sol resolved that. So I literally could not finish it. And there's a couple other pretty big bugs with it. Um, similar to uh, some of the flaws with Deathloop, where like they should have known better before release. Um, like the fact that Juliana's progress in playing through as the invader, uh, she basically doesn't have real progress. It's all random shit that she gets. And so you, you, you don't necessarily get anything good from playing with her. You have chances at getting decent stuff. And a lot of the stuff you get is only relevant for cold. So it's completely pointless if you're playing as Juliana. Um, but that said, all of those downsides are probably not as big a downsides as the fact that you cannot finish LEGO Star Wars 3. Or you might not be able to finish LEGO Star Wars 3. So I'm going to crank that right above there. Right under Dragon Quest. I still think Dragon Quest is... A cooler game uh, especially for its time and also Deathloop has more issues that could cause you to just like outright be unable to play it or have fun and it was kind of a letdown uh, that there weren't multiple correct routes to uh, set up the final series of kills for the game. I was really kind of disappointed in that. <laughs> There's a non-zero chance someone was shitting when the plane slammed home on the towers. There were probably a bunch of people shitting. Think of it, it was early morning. A bunch of people having those coffee shits. Plus, no work was getting done. You know nobody was doing anything at that point. I bet a bunch of them were in the toilets. Did you know Deathloop got several VGA awards? I did not know that, but... It makes sense. It was a pretty high-profile release, but also not a... Like, massive, massive AAA release where people don't want to give it awards. So it was big enough that everyone knew about it, and it was able to throw a lot of money and influence around, but also not too big to where people uh, would feel like they were, you know, uh, letting down their uh, hipsterism by acknowledging it in any way. You know, it takes two one game of the year. I did not know that, but uh, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that because I've seen VTubers uh, play it, and they seem to be having a good time. Um, and I've seen a lot of people say it's like a streamer bait game, but I don't think that's entirely true. It's just a co-op game. <sighs> Alright. I was really hoping somebody would uh, say something about loyalty in Blood Victor Origins. DSP hated Deathloop. Aww. Where is it? Here we go. Loyalty and Blood Victor Origins. Probably the most underrated game in this list. Um, one of the most underrated games on Steam, I think. Uh, it, it's, it's a ton of fun. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with it. It's got great art, great sound effects and music. Um, its structure is really like uh, snappy. You do a lot of like short missions with very discrete goals. Uh, I love the teleport ability. It's a mouse and keyboard focus game. I think there are uh, decent controller support, but uh, it's best to play at mouse and keyboard because you're aiming with the mouse, both the uh, the guns and the uh, the teleport dash. I boy boycott DSP until food comes back. You mean your food or him uh, 
cooking food or reviewing food? Did he stop reviewing food too? Anyway, there are some downsides to this, like the, the crafting system's a little uh, chunky. There's, there's a lot of times where you'll want a, uh, a weapon and you'll either have to like grind shit to get uh, enough of some common material to make it or uh, you just won't know what the material is that it wants and you'll never be able to figure it out because it's actually a drop from a hidden mini boss or something in one level um, but that aside uh, it's a lot of fun to actually unlock new weapons and try them out um, and, and the structure of it being so quick and uh, sort of low uh, low investment I think really helps it it feels kind of like uh, a Game Boy Advance game like one of the Mega Man uh, Mega Man Zero games or something like that with the way the mission structure is oh no there there's crafting but it's crafting for new weapons new guns that you unlock The Quake Remaster had some funny hiccups. Yeah, I played through the Quake Remaster. I don't... I don't think I, uh... I wrote about it, though. No, because I played through Quake, um, last year. And the remaster didn't... It had some funny quirks, but it wasn't enough for me to actually talk about again. Yeah, uh, also, you might not realize this, but this is actually a sequel to an older, uh, even more niche, uh, game that was structured more like a Mega Man game with, like, eight, uh, zones that you pick from, um, in a box, and each one ends with like a boss fight and I think they give you abilities or maybe they give you new weapons. I don't remember because I never finished it. Uh, as far as most of the mechanics, it was kind of similar, but the graphics were awful. It had like really badly hand-drawn sprites, um, not, not pixel art, uh, which is actually well animated here. Um, and the environments were all really bland looking and not particularly uh, fun to go through. And they they were also a little bit too long, the levels. It, it was uh, more like along the lines of Mega Man 8 or something as far as the length of each level goes. Uh, but I might, I might revisit it. As much as I like this game, and I've talked about it quite a lot. Uh, and yet it's still pretty much unknown. I remember when the, uh, I mentioned this in my thread or in my post about it, but when uh, the big Steam leaks, like Steam database leaks came out, uh, I downloaded the, the Excel document or whatever and looked at it. And just out of curiosity, like, what, what games had I played that were, like, really, really low on, uh, like, people's awareness or whatever? And this was literally one of the least played uh, games on Steam at the time. And I was like, there's no way. Like, I thought this was awesome. I, uh, I played the hell out of it when it came out. Like, how has nobody played it, but it just, I guess it came out at, like, a bad time and had no real, uh, marketing or anything. Uh, I doubt it even showed up on any gaming, uh, journalism sites, because I don't think any of them were really doing a, like, weekly roundup like some of them do now, of lesser-known indie stuff. Um, and I don't think the guy... What's that one Metal Slug clone? Um, 
Metal Slug. The skeleton boss looks cool as hell. All the bosses are pretty cool. It's multiplayer. Hmm. Uh, Mercenary Kings. The UI and dodge rolls. Well, the dodge roll's interesting because uh, that's just what you do when you dash on the ground without teleporting. Um, and if you're in the air, uh, or if you hold down the button, you like outright teleport to where the cursor is, or at least a certain distance in front of you. And you have kind of, uh, it consumes some of your stamina. And you don't, uh, you don't actually level up. Uh, instead you craft new armor, or you find new armor pieces and you slot in gems to increase various stats. And like different armor has different intrinsic effects and different amounts of uh, gem slots and so forth. So you have a lot of customization yeah, bonus gem damage. It's mostly bonus gem stamina in this, but... Yeah, this is one of those games where... Uh, th this is one of those games... Or one of the games that is the reason why I bother doing shit like this. Uh, because I, I, I don't think anyone would ever... If I didn't write posts about games like this and if I didn't uh, put up posts for recommendations in the, the sales thread and if I didn't do shit like this then literally I would have played this game and been like oh this was really cool I hope this dev does something else and then moved on with my life and literally nobody on the planet would ever think about this game again not even the dev uh, and I think that's a shame. Because this was definitely... Uh, it's it's better than most shit that gets put out for like $60. And you can pick it up for a dollar on most sales. What is this crap? This is... Uh, <laughs> um, loyalty and Blood Victor Origins. Which is a game I played years ago. Um, but it's also a game I'll play again. Now... I I'm gonna throw the... Uh, the value thing into the mix here. I, I really think this might be the best... Is regular Victor good? No, not really. It might be okay, but I never actually finished it, and it, it just felt, uh... Because I, I originally played the first Victor a long, long time, well, however long before this came out, and I thought it was kind of interesting, but I never got more than, like, a couple levels into it. And then when this came out, I saw it, and I didn't even realize that it was a sequel until after I had bought it and went, oh yeah, Victor, that one game. It's kind of weird that uh, he followed it up with something with, like, actually decent pixel art. <clears throat> I will skip to Origins. Absolutely skip to Origins. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think this dev is even doing anything anymore. Um, I think I looked it up at one point and there was just nothing. Uh, so I think this this did flop hard enough to completely kill the developer. Uh, which is a shame and kind of surprising because the first Victor didn't, apparently. But maybe it was a situation sort of like, uh... Uh... What's his name? Uh, Pugware that did the, uh, the Scoutfeld games. Where, uh, he thought he wasn't even gonna be able to finish the fourth game, but then... A, I, I guess someone died and he got an investment or something, or, or maybe he got like some sort of charity money and he was able to keep making games. Uh, maybe that happened once for this guy, uh, and then he had a second flop and 
had to go back to either dying in a gutter somewhere or getting a real job, which is even sadder. <clears throat> I know it sounds like I'm choking up right now, but it's literally just my throat drying out from talking too much. Oh, Robot Named Fight. That is a game I haven't thought of for a while. Yeah, that was uh, not great. It was kind of interesting. So if anyone doesn't know, a Robot Named Fight is a uh, roguelite uh, metroidvania where the, the metroidvania map is randomized each time you play through it. And uh, you've got like different alternatives for every uh, like metroid style obstacle or whatever. So like you, you might need the ability to like uh, double jump but you might also get an ability that lets you like throw something out for you to bounce off of or you might get a an ability that lets you reverse gravity outright. He worked for a phone app company. Ah, I see. Yeah, and, and uh, being that I think that game has been abandoned, I'm assuming it didn't go too well for him, because I have not heard any updates on uh, a robot named Fight for like several years. The whole game is literally just by him. Oh, really? I, I didn't realize. I thought it was like a... I, I assumed it was a small team. It did well. Huh. That I also was am kind of surprised by. So it, it struck me as kind of bland. I played through it a couple times and was like, ah, it's kind of fun. But I didn't have uh, any interest in like figuring out uh, or, or like replaying it over and over trying to get, like unlock all of the bosses or whatever oh he ported it to switch I see yeah, a couple popular streamers that's nice Th see that's the kind of thing I wish would have happened with like this or the the scout fold games hmm <clears throat> Because I, I think there's a lot more going on with this in the Scoutfold games than there was with a robot named Fight. Like it would, a robot named Fight is okay, and it has that kind of cute idea of the different alternatives for, you know, mobility upgrades or whatever. Um, but it didn't didn't really add up to much. <clears throat> when they're not dog shit. Yeah, I mean, even when they are dog shit, sometimes that's a lot more interesting and entertaining than, like, a competently made uh, but bland game or a competently made, like, corporate uh, iteration of a franchise or something like that. Which is what I think most people play most of the time. <clears throat> But this is not that. This is an actually very, very good uh, labor of love that got zero love. And uh, Haffle, I, I, I feel you on... Uh, I don't think Haffle's even here, so I'm free to do this. Uh, I, I feel Haffle on Hero's Spirit being his game of the year. Because um, I did really think it was fun... And it was a really interesting to uh, r like go through like alongside him and kind of experience something that with with no chance of spoilers. Uh, but Victor Origins, you can literally pick it up for a buck. There's no reason not to pick it up for a buck. Like I don't, I can't think of any. Uh, like taste in games besides just complete like uh bland normie like uh, i just play call of duty or i just play football games where you wouldn't enjoy victor origins i don't know how steam handles what gets put on the front page uh they take hand they take money <laughs> you pay them to get on the front page at least now 
Like I don't I don't think there's even actually a system for it. I think you literally just have to have you know one of your uh, you know whoever handles your media stuff reach out to them and be like we'll pay you to get on the front page for the first week that's the only and i think that's literally the only way to survive as an indie developer like recommended for you stuff again i don't think there's much to the algorithm for that honestly i think it basically just empties the bucket into the recommended for you and then they rely on people actually digging through the trough to find anything they're interested in like i'll click on my recommended for you and it's just garbage it's it's all bullshit it's like literally i'll uh, let me pull it up right now all right uh I mean, if you go to the splash page. Elden Ring. All right. I haven't pre-ordered it now yet, but I will. War Tales. All this crap. No Man's Sky. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy. I I'm never going to play any of this shit. Spice and Wolf 2. VR 2. Okay. Okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Escape Simulator, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Voidigo. What is this? This is a roguelite. I, I move on. Um, and then, what, like, what do I do? What do I do? Do I go down here? Do I follow a curator? Do I put my life in these people's hands? Uh, my discovery queue. Let's let's look at this. Noble Fates, 3D Fantasy Kingdom Sim. No. Halo Infinite. Wow. I, how would I have ever discovered the Halo franchise uh, if it wasn't recommended to me through an algorithm? I'm sure this is a deeply complex algorithm. See, it knows that I have played <laughs> a thousand hours of Warframe. Clearly, probably skewing the results, I'll admit. Um, and then 12.4 hours of Planet Side 2. And, and through that, determined that players like you love this game. Because there's, there's no reference point for the fact that I stopped playing Warframe like a decade ago. Right? <laughs> the old spicy wolf. I've heard of Noble Fate. <laughs> Holy shit. And also that most of this was idling. Because Warframe was a game, probably still is a game, where you basically like put stuff on to cook for like three days. Uh Pray for the Gods. This just came out. This is what? This is the the Dark Souls, the end, uh, whatever. Whatever. Maybe. Maybe someday I'll play this. Let's see what else they have. Icarus. Oh, what is this similar to? Terraria and Starbound. Oops. Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Similar to games you've played, U-Boat, another early access game that is basically useless and unplayable right now. Um, and two friends want this. Why was this recommended to me? Like, I don't play anything like this. Guardians of the Galaxy. Huh, I wonder how... I wonder how this got recommended to me. See, because it's very similar to Fallout 4, which I loathed and Outer Wilds, which I adored. I don't know w what unifying factor could possibly be between these two games. What thread, what connective tissue binds Fallout 4 to Outer Wilds? Oh, maybe it's a billion fucking dollars. Was that what got it here in front of me right now? 
Age of Darkness, Final Stand. Is this a Warhammer game? It's a tower defense game. Whatever. Jurassic World Evolution 2. I don't I don't know who's making these games, whoever Frontier Developments is. Are are they like backed by somebody? Are they backed by Pfizer or something? Like how are these games like as popular as they are? Nobody plays these types of games. Why are they playing the Jurassic World version of this? Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX. Um, this has clearly just come out. And, uh... I mean, fair. Algorithmically fair. I almost sneezed right into the mic. Algorithmically fair that this would be recommended to me. War Tales. Um, what is this? Mountain Blade. Oh, yeah. I, I've already looked at this, though. I looked at this and I moved on. Why is this in my recommended queue now? Thunder Tier 1 is a realistic top down shooter. Hang on. Thunder 1. The situation has evolved. British accent. And Opus Star of Sar Song, e Opus Echo of Star Song, which is here um, because I play gay shit and uh, I have recently acquired the first two games of this series and intend to play them. So yeah, y you'll notice at least half of those games had nothing to do with anything that I have ever touched, like, in recent memory. It, the only reason they were up on that is because the, the publishers gave Steam money for it to be pushed into everybody's recommended queue. Remember Dreadnought? Yes, yes, I do. We noticed you love shitty games. <clears throat> Go off, King. Sounds like a conspiracy theory. Maybe. Maybe. What was I talking about before that? Was I going to... Oh, it was because of the loyalty and blood. <sighs> so, again, uh, something I was praying that somebody would bring up before me... Uh, but it looks like I'll have to bite the bullet on this one. Uh, as far as game, like discovering games, this was one that some a lot of people uh, asked me how I even found, and it it's it's here's what I do. Here's what I do. I go to the store. I scroll down. I go to new releases. I look at these. Uh, mostly to see if anything on my wish list is right here up front, and then uh, if there's anything that's like anime porn, uh, I, I glance at it to see what the art style is like. Then I click on new releases. Sometimes I, I click on this if I just want to like click, click, click through a bunch of bullshit. You'll notice like these are supposed to be curated in some way. Is this game relevant to you? Like, they're supposed to be actually trying to, like, find... What is this? Why? Is this because I played Desperados 3 this week? And there's a cowboy hat? Or maybe it's because uh, I played Neosense, and there's, there's a lady in a wheelchair. So yeah, sometimes, sometimes I do that, and I go click, 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 click. Uh, just to, you know, get through things without straining my eyes. But more often, you go down here, you go new release, not popular new releases, new releases, see all new releases. And then you can kind of go through here and develop like an eyesight to filter out things that are not games. Um... Uh, to filter out things that are DLC for some bullshit that you don't own, like uh, uh, D DCS. I, I actually do, I think, own DCS, but I'm, I'm never buying DLC for it. Um, and, like, soundtracks and stuff like that. 
and you can catch glimpses of something sort of like this. Salt and Sanctuary mod, yeah. Yes, if you want to talk about the Salt and Sanctuary mod, mod Baka, tell me and I will add your name to this and I will invite you. You played Cuck Simulator? I did not play Cuck Simulator. Uh, Falak Baldwin played Cuck Simulator. And one of the most fascinating things about Cuck Simulator is that you can actually access uh, websites through it. There's a browser in the game. I've only played the vanilla game. Well, we can still talk about it. Because there's honestly not much to the mod. Like, I'll mention what uh, was going on with the mod, but it's not crazy. Meanwhile, Darkest Dungeon gets millions of players. Yeah. Okay, it's 2D Dark Souls. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So CHR dollar sign 143 is what we're looking at here. And this was one of those things I just found looking at new releases. I said, what the f- what is this? Is this a, uh... Is this like a re-release of an actual Commodore 64 game? Or... Yeah, what What is this? Salt and Sanctuary has clerks. Yeah, the, the art style is not great in Salt and Sanctuary. <clears throat> yeah, CHR, dollar sign. Um, yeah, I found it. I was like, what is this? And I bought it even not really knowing what it was. And I'm glad I did, because it, it's a lot more interesting than it looks at first glance. It's sort of a puzzle game, sort of a construction simulator thing, but then there's a lot more to it. Um, sort of a physics simulation, but it, it's a much better game as far as being a physics simulation than Noida is, for example. Um, for one thing, it's not a roguelike or roguelite and for another, it, it, it feels like you're actually accomplishing something when you make something that works in this, or even something that doesn't quite work. Like right there, you just saw me blow up a, uh, a uh, dual core nuclear power plant. And here I am uh, filling up a, uh, a vessel that I created in order to hold uh, hydrogen gas to use it in fuel cells. Um, yeah, th this was great. I, I had a great time with it, although some of, some of the puzzles are a little tedious to actually complete. Um, some of the solutions are a little finicky. Uh, some of the elements are uh, feel a little buggy or, or hard to use. But, uh, I, I, I thought this was a great game, and I, I highly recommend it if you can put up with it. And I, I don't think many people can actually get much out of this, unfortunately. Uh, because it takes a real investment in attention and interest in order to even get past the early tutorials but if you're if you're into this kind of game like this is the ultimate in it um it you do a lot of tasks like you know creating a, a power plant or something and making it run efficiently and even eventually like clean cleaning up uh the, the 
uh, pollution from it or whatever. And, and not many games manage that sort of thing and have it actually work and feel like you're actually designing and constructing and operating something the way this does. Uh, that said, it is extremely, extremely tedious at times. And uh, I also am kind of frustrated with the, uh, the dev for just sitting on Discord, but I guess I can't hold it against him personally. Um, because I know that's that's just how indie gaming is now. Like everybody just sits on their Discord now, uh, and only ever talks to the handful of people that sit on their Discord. ZZT for Spurgs. ZZT is for Spurgs. This is uh, Z ZZT. Um. I mean, it really is ZZT with physics simulated. It's ZZT combined with Kerbal uh, Space Program. ZZT with water physics. There's a lot more than just water physics. There's radiation physics. <laughs> Alright, uh, where to place this? Because as, as much as I, I think it's underrated, I do think it's a, it's a tough sell for most people. I don't think many people are really going to want to uh, even get to the meat of this. And then once, th once they get to the meat of it, I think most of them are going to bail. Like, almost immediately. Place it high, then. Fuck them. I think I would put it just below Hero Spirit. I think Smashing Spirits is a lot of fun, but there's also just not much t to it. It's, it's pretty short, and though that might make it an overall better package than this, I think this accomplishes a lot more of what it sets out to do. Uh, also, I made a level, which was what uh, we just saw. And this is my level that I made for the game and is currently up on the Steam Workshop. Um, and actually sitting down and making a custom map for a game is something that I haven't done in like 20 years because I. It, it's usually kind of miserable to actually do, uh, like, make custom assets for stuff, or make, like, uh, community stuff. Uh, but this, like, I finished the game and was still interested in it enough to say, oh, I wonder what the level creation tools are like. I wonder, I wonder, uh, how these pieces would interact and then I eventually sat down and started making a level and made something pretty different than anything that was already in the game. I made like a uh, kind of a rudimentary uh, uh, adventure game setup where you don't really build or destroy anything. You just sort of walk around and find like contextual points and it pops up with chat or in the, the, the chat window down at the bottom, like little things that I'd uh, written out. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I think the, the, the chance to get into something like that is worth the headache. Um, but I, I do think Hero's Spirit is probably more generally fun and also less of an ask. So I'm going to put it 
between Hero's Spirit and Smashing Spirits. Breaking up the spirits. Just be pissed. Alright. I should make a produce level. Yes. Yeah. Alright, who said something? Oh, Baka. Baka just said he wanted to talk about Salt and Sanctuary. But I don't think you actually wanted to talk about it. So I'll just pull it up. I mean, I beat it. Yeah, I did uh, one loop. I've played Salt and Sanctuary several times. I've gotten a couple new game cycles in. And, uh. 1M. What's 1M paying? Are you saying one minute? I've, I've played through it a bunch of times. This mod that I played through it with didn't add or change much. It was basically just rescaling some of the damage values for stuff like the the dagger weapons, the whip weapons, make them a little more viable. And it was fine. <clears throat> but, uh... And... As far as these types of games go, I, I think Salt and Sanctuary is the closest you'll actually get to like a 2D Dark Souls. So if that's what you're after, it, I think Salt and Sanctuary is uh, obviously ideal. Um, but yeah, it's not a beautiful game and it, it honestly goes deeper than just being kind of ugly and having ugly character designs. Uh, the game is very, very dark at times. And even when it's not dark, it's sometimes too visually cluttered to really comfortably see what's going on, which is a problem. Some of the designs are kind of cool, but a lot of them are just kind of ugly or cartoonish. Dishonored, um, hang on. If you want to see the full list. Songy. Uh, the OP of my thread that I linked there has all of the games in chronological order of when I finish them, and you can click on the link and it'll take you to the post about it. Um, if you want to see if there's any ones that you want to talk about. It was ugly and hard to read. I stopped after the third or fourth area. That's fair enough. Um. And yeah, this isn't everyone's bag. But I really liked it after playing it once. I kept playing it and I've played it probably about half a dozen times at this point. Um. I only played with Two-Handed Mace, though. Two-Handed Mace was, is really good in this. Um, the shields are not very good, and the, the ranged weapons are terrible, especially by uh, at default stats. Um, the best weapon, though, is hilariously the Great Scissors, which are like a gimmick weapon that's a great sword that opens up into a pair of giant scissors. Um, and the special move with them while two-handing them that opens them up and closes them as scissors, it does so much fucking damage that you can, like, literally destroy most bosses. Not even, out like, super leveled up. You can destroy most bosses before they react. <clears throat> does the mod add any weapons? I don't think it adds any. No. No, I think it was mostly just balance changes. I don't know of any mods for this that do add anything uh, significant. 
unfortunately. Because <clears throat> the game is flawed in a lot of those ways that mods might help, but most of the mods are just kind of like rebalancing or tweaking. I'm completely out of water now at this point, so I'm going to have to wrap this up pretty soon. Or go get water. <clears throat> so I, I like Salt and Sanctuary quite a bit, but I also, I wouldn't recommend it too strongly to most people. Uh, I think most people are kind of turned off by the, the 2D Souls thing. It's not real popular now. Um... The, the graphics are pretty bad. Instead of talking about D2R, talk about your favorite D2 mods. So I won't be talking about D2R, or at least uh, that's not what I'm going to be ranking, uh, because I have not written a post about D2R despite having played it. Uh, pr at this point, probably more than I played D2 earlier in the year for this p the post that I made. Um... I've got some stuff to say about D2R, but it's not going to be that interesting, especially since I think most people who care have probably played it themselves at this point, or have watched like you know dozens of hours of people pontificating about the exact things that I would bring up. <clears throat> um. I'm kind of interested in what the balance changes they've recently promised are going to actually entail. If it'll actually like improve some of the classes that kind of are miserable to play right now. But uh, yeah, as far as a remake, it's okay. Uh, with the one massive caveat that I suspect that it was responsible for my PSU dying, my power supply dying. Uh, because I think they uh, literally optimized it so poorly that uh, the way they got around having massive uh, loading screen uh, lag out uh, was they basically brute force throw all of the assets into your, or basically throw every loading asset into your GPU all at once, and that the, the power spike for people who have, like, m actual high, uh, high-draw GPUs, like modern high-draw GPUs, I think it is probably enough to actually cause damage to components if you don't, uh, manually restrict the frame rate because the frame rate shoots up to like 2000 in loading screens it's fucking ridiculous but that's a whole different issue i wouldn't be talking about that uh when talking about d2 because d2 does not have that problem and that's the game that i finished and put a uh, post out for Ah, uh, Salt and Sanctuary. Where am I going to put this one? It's definitely better than Grime. Um, I think I'd rather play it than Crown Trick, but I don't know if it's better than LEGO Star Wars. I think it might be better than the first LEGO Star Wars, but not as good as the third one. I really just kind of want something to wedge between LEGO Star Wars to make the difference a little bit more acute. NVIDIA bribing Activision and Amazon to destroy computer hardware. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. With the supply issues the way they are, can you imagine if they can be like, okay, we, we can guarantee that everyone who paid out the ass to get a hold of a, a graphics card in this uh, in this economy uh, will pay for a new one. 
they'll they'll pay the shipping from darkest china yeah this is a very arbitrary spot to put it because i don't really have anything concrete to say that it's worse than clone wars or better than the complete saga um but i really don't want to try comparing it to like death loop I don't think it's as good as Elder Lilies. It's similar in a lot of ways, but there there's more fluff to this and the the art style's awful comparatively. So that is Salt Sanctuary with the resalted mod, which honestly didn't add up to much. Hey, it's really derivative, what, Salt and Sanctuary? I guess. I don't know. I, I always liked it, but it, I don't know. It's kind of worn on me as I played it so many times. Hmm. <clears throat> And there's really not a whole lot of variety to play style, unfortunately. Like, most of the spells are terrible, and then one or two of the spells are, like, completely broken and overpowered. And that's a lot of the equipment, too. Like, a lot of it is just kind of useless, or, you know, feels like you're just, like, slapping the enemies. And then you've got stuff like the, the giant two-handed maces, the in-game ones, that annihilate stuff the the great scissors even most of the great swords just blow shit up uh and you try using like the hunter class that has a whip and crossbow uh without this resalted mod the balance scaling mod and uh you're like tickling the dragon at the top of the uh cigarette it's an okay game. It's clean and decently placed. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'll probably replay it again at some point. Um, but there's now stuff that's similar that I like better. So. It did honestly come out a, a decent while ago for this type of game. So I think it was a lot more impressive at the time. So we're at uh, 21 here. <laughs> and we need to get to 63. So I'm going to have to like really pick up the pace. Or just kind of slam through some shit. I mean, this is going to be a problem. I I don't know. I think I might just do this in, like, one marathon sitting. Uh, maybe tomorrow. I'll, uh... I'll start this up and just, like, slam through the Mega Mans, including Eleven, I guess. Uh, and not give anyone a chance to say anything, because if we start arguing about like Mega Man 3 versus Mega Man 2 uh, that's never gonna end and like where they go in the greater list is gonna be kind of crazy also I haven't uh, I didn't have many clips for most of these okay but which ranks highest Mega Man 9 Mega Man 9 is gonna go highest Oh, <laughs> this fucking emoji. Oh, man, Terminals isn't even here. Hang on. Is Terminals alive? I want to alert him that I'm uh, streaming right before I stop streaming, because he hates that. Nah, he's not online. Almost every time I stop streaming, if Terminals isn't around, he, like, shows up for, like, either, like, the last minute or so when I'm saying I'm going to bed, or he'll show up, like... I'll see it when I pull pull up the stream again. I'll see that he, like, left a message, like, five minutes after I quit, going, God oh, damn it. 
But uh, Terminals gets that uh, emoji all the time. I love it. But yeah, Mega Man 9 uh, is amazing. I would probably... Oof. I might put it at number two at this point. We'll leave it. I, I'll, I'll sleep on that. But yeah, Mega Man 9 would be the highest ranked one. And then I don't know, honestly, where I would put the lowest one. It would be either 7, 8, or 11. And honestly, I think it would be 11. I really think 11 would be the, the worst Mega Man game. Mainline, mainline Mega Man game. <clears throat> okay. Now I need to get a hill the big turd and have him uh, go with me through Yakuza, Deedlet, and Tony Hawks. And I don't think anybody's posted anything else in my thread. So I think everything else is still free. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Alright, so I'm gonna go uh, rest my throat. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching and helping out. Uh, thank you, Pang, for uh, showing up and uh, talking about Lord of the Rings. Lego Lord of the Rings when I was trying to talk about Lego Star Wars. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right. I'll see you guys.